Welcome to Sorsogon Baptist Church SBC Converge Sunday Worship Service. We are a community of believers from all walks of life, committed to love God and love people, and empowered to make an impact in the city of Sorsogon and beyond by upholding the greatest commission in Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Prepare your Bible, your notebook and pen to take notes of verses and important points that you can review when you get home. Please also observe the minimum health protocols by wearing face masks, maintaining physical distancing, and sanitizing your hands and personal belongings. May the Lord open our heart and mind as we worship and give praises to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
bawat oras at sandali
heart and soul. Jesus, I'm living for you. You have it. Glory and praises will honor the Panginoon. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pagpapala po sa lahat. Magandang araw po sa inyo. Patapos na, patapos na rin po ang buwan ng uh, Febrero. And uh, by just a few days from now, month of March na rin po tayo. At uh, napaka sarap isipin minsan na ang mga nakaraan ng mga araw, nakaraan ng buwan ay kumbaga ang dami pong uh, bagong mga bagay na nagaganap sa ating kap- kapaligiran. Ika nga, uh, we can see that uh, the hand of God is moving sa ating uh, mga buhay sa ating kongregasyon at sa ating kalagitnaan. And uh, some of us ay uh, talagang uh, ang Panginoon ay um, nakikinig sa mga panalangin at uh, sumasagot talaga ng mga panalangin ng kanyang mga lingkod. But uh, let me ask you this question. Have you ever tried to ask the Lord nasubukan mo bang manalangin sa Panginoon ng mga bagay na masasabi natin sadyang 
and possible. Take note of the word impossible. Nasubukan na ba natin yon? By the way, ano nga po yung imposible? Ibig sabihin na yung imposible? Tinignan ko po yan sa diksyonary. Ang sabi po doon, impossible are those things that are not possible to occur. Not able to occur. Not able to exist. And not possible to be done. The word not possible. So yun po ang impossible. Beyond the bounds of... Uh, The possibilities. Things that should be out of question. Because those are impossible. Kaya nga, sabi na, you should not consider these things because these are impossible. Ika nga, impractical, non-viable. Those are the synonym, synonyms of uh, the word impossible. Kaya, sa ating lingwahe, ang imposible ay yung mga bagay na hindi pwedeng mangyari. Yung mga bagay na hindi pwedeng maganap. Ang tanong ko, have you ever tried to pray for the impossible things? Alam ko, yung iba sa atin sasabihin, uh, ang hirap kasi, ang hirap uh, manalangin ng mga bagay na imposible. Well, nasanay tayo na magpray o humingi sa Panginoon ng mga bagay na hindi naman talaga imposible. Humihiling tayo sa kanya ng mga bagay na wala tayo. Pero posible magkaroon tayo. Ibig, ibig sabihin, the things that uh, we are asking from the Lord ay yung mga bagay na nandyan lang sa ating kapaligiran at pwedeng maganap. Seldom. Behera or baka hindi pa natin nasubukan na humingi kay Lord ng mga bagay na imposible. Let's open up our Bibles in Joshua chapter 10. Basahin po natin yung verse 12 hanggang verse 15. But uh, the story of the lesson or itong ating aralin sa araw na to ay sa buong chapter 10 po. And I would want to encourage everyone na tingnan po ang kabuan. At sana po sabi ko nga sa inyo nung nakaraan, basahin po natin yung, yung context, yung mga, mga chapters in the book of Joshua. Muli po, on Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 to 15, it says, On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon, And you, moon, over the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jashar, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never, never been a day like it before or since a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely, The Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with Israel to the camp at Gilgal. You see, itong kwento po na to, na binasa ko pala ngayon, ay isang kwento ng isang bagay na hiniling ng isang tao, isang bagay na sadyang kung titingnan natin, science and physics and everything, ay hindi pwedeng maganap. Hindi pwedeng mangyari. Pero in this instance, isang tao, at yun po si Joshua, ang nanalangin sa Panginoon ng isang imposibling bagay. And the Lord listen. Pinakinggan ng Panginoon, at hindi lang pinakinggan ng Panginoon, He answered in the affirmative. Sinagot po ng, pa, ng Panginoon. And that kind of, of prayer ni Joshua is really amazing. It is an, an incredible prayer. Hindi po ba? Hiniling niya sa Panginoon, araw, tumigil ka, buwan, tumigil ka rin, sun stood still and moon stopped going. 
Kasi di ba, pagka ang, ang araw ay uh, pababa na, about to go sunset na ika nga, magsisimula naman yung, yung buwan. Itong dalawang ito, na mga firmament in sa kalawakan ay tumigil. Actually, it, if titingnan po natin ngayon sa science, hindi naman talaga gumagalaw yung yung ano, yung uh, araw. Ang gumagalaw ay ang ating mundo, the planet Earth. Meaning in this particular situation, tumigil sa paggalaw, sa pag-inog, sa pag-rotate, sa pag-revolve ang planeta Earth, ang planeta ng mundo. And this is really very very impossible. Ano bang naging pinto nito? Bakit uh, ganun yung nangyari? Di ba sa ating inaral nung nakaraan, nakipagkasundo si Joshua sa mga Gibeonites. Nagkaroon sila ng Treaty of Peace. Kaya nga, hindi sila, ang mga Gibeonites, kahit nalaman nila Joshua na sila ay uh, pinaikot sila ay nabudol, sila ay na-scam, dahil hindi naman talaga pala nang galing sa isang malayong lugar, ang mga give you that, kundi sila ay malapit lang doon sa hinihimpilan nila pansamantala na lugar ng Gilgal. Dahil sa takot ng mga give you that, sa kipagkasundo. At uh, kahit ika nga na, na luko, they were deceived, hindi na ginalaw ng mga Israelites nila Joshua ang Gibeon. They spare Gibeon and in effect, they, they became allies. Sa sitwasyon na to, nung makita ng mga nakapali, nakapaligid na mga bayan, mga lungsod, there were uh, five cities, big cities, na sinabi po rito in chapter 10, verse 1, ito po yung bayan ng, ng Jerusalem. Ang bayan ng, uh, ng Lakish, ng uh, Debir, at ng Hebron, bali, limang bayan ito ang nagkasundo na kanilang sasalakayin pupulbosin ang ang Gibeon dahil nakipag-alliance kay, kay Joshua. At dahil dito ang ginawa ni, ng mga Gibeonites nagpaalam kay Joshua ang sabi kay Joshua ito na po nangyari sa amin dahil sa amin pakipagkasundo sa, sa inyo kami po ngayon ay gustong lusubin ng limang hari na nagmula sa limang malalaking bayan at lungsod. And with that, makita natin na si na Joshua ay hindi lang pala sila nakikipagkasundo sa salita, kundi pinakitik, pinap pinapakita ngayon ni Joshua ang kanilang pakikipagsundo na meron talagang gawa. Isang totoong pakikipag-alyansa ang ginawa ni na Joshua. Pwede na kung ta, pwede na mo sanang magkaroon si na Joshua ng dahilan. Bahala kayo dyan kasi niloko nyo kami. Pero hindi po yung ginawa ni Joshua. At ng mga leaders ng Israel. At ng Israel mismo. Ang ginawa ni Joshua, naghanda sila. And they consulted the Lord. And the Lord said, to them, to them, ito po ang sinabi, chapter 10, verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 7, so Joshua marched up from Gilgal with the entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, in verse 8, 
Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. This is it. So Joshua is being true with his oath. Hindi niya sinabi na bahala kayo diyan. Niloko niyo kami, pangatawanan ninyo yung yung inyong uh, panluloko sa amin. Hindi kami sa inyo makikialam but Joshua being a man of honor, being a man of his word with his commitment with his promises. Hinanda niya kanang kanyang fighting men, the best fighting men. And with the situation, you know what? The Lord affirmed their actions. And the Lord said, in verse 8, ulitin ko po, the Lord said, the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. And in verse 9, I would want to read it. Tituloy ko lang po. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. Take note. All night, all night uh, march from Gilgal, isang buong gabi, naglalakad ang mga Israelites papunta doon sa kinahihimpilan ng, kanang mga, ng kumakalaban sa Gibeon all night. They made a surprise attack. Tika muna. Isang buong gabi na naglalakad. More or less eight hours. Ang layo nun. Kung gabi sila naglalakad, itong mga, mga kawal ng Israel kasama si Joshua, probably they are physically worn out. They will be physically exhausted at, at this point in time. Pero ang ginawa nila, they staged a surprise attack. Ano meron sila? They have this strength na kakaiba. Why? My friends, in verse 8, ang sabi ng Panginoon, Go, Joshua! They cannot stand before you. Mananalo ka dito, tatalunin mo sila. Kaya kahit pa, pagod na pagod, sa kanilang paglalakad buong gabi, the Israelites staged a surprise attack against the five cities, against the five kings na gustong sumalakay, gustong lumusob sa Gibeon. Along the way, sa kanilang pakipaglaban, sa sobrang dami, Merong isang kakaibang nangyari. In verse 10, alright, ulitin ko po yung verse 9, and after an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. In verse 10, the Lord threw them into confusion before, the, before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Asi, Asika and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down to the Beth Horon to Asika, the Lord hauled large hailstones down on them from the sky. And more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. What is happening here? Ano ba nangyayari dito? The Isra Israelites, the Joshua, gumawa na isang surprise attack at siyempre na surprise itong maraming kalaban nila. Ito ay tumakbo and the enemies were defeated. Kaya lang maraming tumatakbo Habang tumatakbo, merong mga malaking tipak na bato. Hailstones. 
galing saan? Sa langit, from the skies. Binabato yung tumatakbo. At ang sabi rito, mas marami pa yung namamatay o namatay sa pamagitan ng bato kisa sa pamagitan ng espada. What is happening here? There is something supernatural going on. Why? Nandun ang Panginoon. The Lord is going with the Israelites' army. Kasama. Buong araw. Mula umaga hanggang tanghali. No magtanghali na perhaps nakita na Joshua na marami pa silang hinahabol. In verse 12, yung binasa ko po kanina. On the day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, habang nag- hinahabol nila yung mga kalaban, ang sabi ni Joshua sa Panginoon, Panginoon, let the sun stand still over Gibeon. Patigilin mo siya. Pero so, hindi pa naman alam ni hindi man alam ni, jo, ni Joshua yata na talaga hindi naman gumagalaw yung araw. Alam ka? Tumigil. Tumigil yung araw sa paggalaw. Meaning, tulad na sinabi ko kanina, tumigil yata ang mundo sa pag-ikot at sa pag-inog. Ang sabi po rito, in verse 14, There has never been a day like it before or since, or day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Wow! Impossible. Beyond the bounds of the possible. Ano tawag dito? Amazing. Supernatural. Praying for the impossible. You know what? It happened to okay, Joshua because Joshua obeyed the Lord. Joshua get out of his comfort zone. Di ba po hindi naman sila matulog doon sa kanang kinahimpilan ng lugar sa Gilgal? Huwag na makialam kasi pwede pagkatapos lusobin ng mga kalaban yung kumakalaban sa Gibeon, yung limang lungsod at limang hari, doon pa, doon na sila gagalaw. Pwede sa gabing, gabing yon, they will just stay in the camp. Komportabling, komportable. However, Joshua, get out of their comfort zone. They step out in faith. And obey the Lord. As the Lord said, go. You know, my friends, amazing things, supernatural happenings, impossible will only happen if we get out from our comfort zone, we step out in faith and obey the Lord. Obey the Lord kung ano ang sinasabi, ano yung plano niya para sa atin. We have seen, marami na po tayo nakikita in these past days kung paano gumagalaw si Panginoon. Pero yung itong mga nangyayari sa atin, parang masasabi natin, these are just pa- part of them, the possible things that may happen. Not really impossible. But today, 
Gusto ko pong subukan po natin ito. Subukan natin humiling kay Panginoon. Ano ba yung mga bagay na imposible? Kasi, ang Panginoong Jesus mismo, in Luke chapter 18 verse 27, what is impossible with man is possible with God. And Jesus said again in Mark chapter 9 verse 23, everything is possible for one who believes. Yung buwan, yung araw, they stood still, tumigil sila, contrary to the laws of nature, kinuntra yung, yung batas ng kalikasan, kaya nga mas, mata, matatawag at masasabi natin na imposible po talaga. But you know what? Sino ba ang naglagay ng batas ng kalikasan? These are just the simple processes that God has set into motion. And being a sovereign God, ang ating Panginoon, He can alter. He can suspend. Or even at point in situations he can cancel the processes if he desires. And when the natural processes, the law of nature ay nasususpend, ang tawag po natin, miracle. Di ba? Miracle happens when some usual pattern of nature, nature is changed or interrupted due to God's personal intervention. Now, what is my personal takeaway nitong binasa natin? Nitong prayer ni Joshua for the impossible. At gusto ko pong sabihin po ito sa inyo sa, sa umagang, sa araw na to. My takeaway is this. In our lives, there will be extraordinary opportunities. There will be momentum that the Lord will lay down. Meron pong mga pagkakataon at meron pong momentum, meron pong buwelo na ginagawa at inilalatag ang pa Panginoon para sa atin, para sa bawat tao na kanyang nilalang. Bawat tao na naglilingkod sa kanya. And you know what? This extraordinary opportunities and momentum demand extraordinary responses just like Joshua at ito yung nakita ko rito that God always move in response to the bold prayers to the bold responses of his servants who were driven by an intense desire and motivation to change the impossible situations Si Joshua, ano ba yung nagdadrive sa kanya na motibasyon? What is his desire at this point in time? Ako tingin ko rito, Joshua is just being driven by desire to see a total and complete victory. Sabi niya, Panginoon, patigilin mo yung, yung araw at saka ang buwan dahil gusto namin tapusin ito. Why? The Lord had promised them victory. Joshua is just being driven 
by a desire and motivation to fulfill the task God had told him to do. God had promised to them. Ito yung desire ni Joshua. Ito yung desire, ito yung kagustuhan ni Joshua. Ito yung nice ni Joshua na matapos itong pinapagawa sa kanya ng Panginoon. Na matapos itong pinapangako sa kanya ng Panginoon at dito nakikita niya ang kamay ng Panginoon gumagalaw dahil nakikita niya yung mga bato na galing sa langit. Tinatamaan ang kanilang hinahabol ng mga, mga kalaman. Marami pang namatay. Maraming namatay kaysa, kaysa espada. Namatay sa pamagitan ng mga bato. That's the motivation of Joshua. A desire to see a complete victory. A desire and motivation na magampanan at masunod ang salita at pangako ng Panginoon. Alam ni Joshua na ang pagsunod at ang pagtapos sa gawain na pina, iniuutos sa kanya ng Panginoon ay isang pagbibigay luwalhati sa Panginoon. Na kapag natapos niya itong gawain na to, the Lord will be glorified, the Lord will be honored. That is the motivation. And that is why the Lord responded affirmatively. affirmatively. The Lord responded in the affirmative pinatigil ang araw at ang buwan. Another thing. God always moved And the affirmative and response to the hard works being extended by her servants, by his servants. Ang pagsabi ni Diyos o Panginoon, patigilin mo po yung, yung uh, araw at ang buwan. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? These things, this request, this prayers of Joshua ay nangangahulugan ng isang trabaho. Extension of the task. He's not asking for an easy way out. He's not asking for an easy victory. Rather, he's asking for the extension ng kanilang gawain. Extension ng araw. At ang sabi dito, the Lord extended for one full day, isang buong araw, uli. Meaning, another 12 hours? Joshua did not ask for an easy task. He asked for the impossible thing to happen because there is a big job great task na dapat tapusin my friends itong momentum ang gumagawa po nito actually ay ang Panginoon Itong nangyayaring movement, ang gumagalaw po niyan, ang gumagawa po niyan, ay ang Panginoon. At kapag merong momentum nangyayari, it demands more, 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 and more work ahead. There should be a hard work involved.
Yung buong kay Joshua. Hindi po ito madali. They have to fight. They have to run. They have to go after the enemies. They have to finish. Yun po ang hiling ni Joshua. Panginoon. The Lord answered. Natapos sila. Yung laban. Nahuli nila yung limang hari. Natalo nila yung limang bayan. Ano ngayon yung pakiramdam? Pakiramdam ng mga tao, ng mga Israelites. Wow! Ang tende. Sila lang yung makakasabi nito dahil nakita at naranasan nila. Because they were with Joshua. Kaya po ito yung sinasabi ko. Kapag kasama ka, kasama, ta- kasama tayo sa movement ng Panginoon, we will see miracles upon miracles. We will see extraordinary things to ha- that will happen. Because si Panginoon kapag siya nag-uutos, palagi siyang kasama at meron siyang ginagawa. At kapag gumagawa ang Panginoon, merong kamangha-mangha, merong mga bagay na hindi makayang ipaliwanag ng siyensya. At kung hindi ka kasama, hindi mo ito makikita. Hindi mo rin ito mararanasan. Ang sasabihin ng iba, o ikaw mismo kung hindi ka kasama, sabihin mo, nagkataon lang. It was just a coincidence. Pero yung mga kasama na nandun, kasama ni Joshua, nakita niya nagliliparan ng mga bato, naranasan nila yung pagtigil ng araw. It was an amazing experience. An experience of a lifetime. Let me ask you this question again. Have you tried to pray for the impossible? Kung hindi pa, bakit hindi natin subukan? Because, you know, the Lord is the one who is creating the momentum. In our lives, you know what? Nothing is impossible kay Panginoon. Palagi nating sinasabi yan. Pero kapag hindi natin sinubukan, hindi natin maranasan, natutuo nga na ang Panginoon walang imposible sa Kanya. Palagi nating sinasabi that God, that with God, nothing is impossible. Because the territory of God is on the impossibles. Yun ang kanyang teritoryo. Kaya kapag gumagalaw siya, supernatural, amazing things happen. Miracle happen. Pag binasa natin ang Bible, ang dami pong ginawa ng Panginoon ng mga imposible. Itong mga slides na to, dalawang beses, nakita na kung paano hinati yung body of water and they walk sa isang dating body of water na dry ground na kita na parang pader na tubig sa, sa kaliwa pader na tubig sa kanan nakita nila kung, kung paano giniba yung walls of Jericho and the New Testament nakita ng mga disciples ni Jesus kung paano binuhay ang patay paano naka binigyan ng paningin ang mga ang mga Bulag? Paano pinagaling ang may mga sakit? Paano pinatigil ni Jesus ang, ang uh, isang malakas na bagyo, ang isang unos? Because God, when He move, He work on the supernatural things. 
ang kanyang ginagawa. Kapag nagpapakita siya ng kanyang mga gawa, ang lumalabas ay mga bagay na amazing, mga bagay na supernaturals. Tayo na tao, ang kaya natin gawin, yung mga posible lang. But, if we ask the Lord for the impossible, pinapakinggan niya tayo. Lalo na kung itong bagay na to ay naaayon sa kanyang kaluuban. In First uh, John chapter 5 verse 14 to 15 Ito ang sabi dito. And this is the confidence that we have toward him that we that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and we know that he hears us in in whatever we ask whatever we ask we know that we have the request that we have asked for him kapag kiniling natin sa panginoon yung mga bagay na naayon sa kanyang kaluban na kopo kahit man po ito ay imposible kanya itong pakikinggan at kanyang ibibigay at igagawad sa atin. Now this day, I will challenge each and every one of us. Let's try. Subukan natin humiling kay Panginoon ng mga imposible. Paano tayo gumawa ng ganoon? Paano tayo humiling na imposible sa Panginoon? Number one, let's just identify the impossible situation na ating kinakaharap right now. Identify the impossible situations. And check it, mga kapatid. Kung itong impossible situation na to na ating hilingin ay naayon sa kanyang kaluuban. Remember, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with Him. Yung sitwasyon ba ng yung pamumuhay right now? You have that impossible relationship na nagaganap sa yung tahanan, nagkakalabuan na yung mga relationship, mag-asawa, Sinasabi niyo, impossible? Ask the Lord. You know what? If it is His will, it will happen. Imposible ba? Sa tingin mo na ikaw ay umangat sa pamumuhay? Ask the Lord. If you say it's impossible, then Go! Ask the Lord for it. Any impossible situation and circumstances. Write it down in specific words. Merong situation po. In March chapter chapter 10 verse 51 Mark chapter 10, verse 51. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. Tinanong ni Jesus, Ano ba yung gusto kong gawin sa'yo? Kinakausap niya yung isang bulag. Ano gusto kong gawin sa'yo? Sabi ng bulag, Rabbi, Guro, gusto kong makakita. At makita po natin dito sa kwentong ito, ibinigay ng Panginoon. Tinupad ng Panginoon ang hiling ng bulag at nakakita ang bulag. 
Be specific. You know, asking with the Lord. Joshua was very specific when he asked the Lord, Lord, let the sun stood still. The moon stopped moving. At sabihin natin ito kay Panginoon. You have to verbalize. Say it kay Panginoon. Make a declaration. Ask the Lord about it. You know what? In Psalms chapter, chapter 37 verse 4 to 5, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. Delight yourself. Say, ibig sabihin, yung gaya lang maging masaya, magkaroon ng kaluguran ang Panginoon sa atin, sa ating mga ginagawa. At ibibigyan niya yung desire sa ating puso. That we have to commit our ways to the Lord, yung ating mga ginagawa, araw-araw. Trust in Him. And sabi dito, and He will act. Let's try to ask for the impossible. The Lord is moving. He does not stop working. Palagi siyang gumagalaw. Akala natin wala na, wala nangyayari. Pero ang Panginoon yung nandiyan. Let's try it. Just like Joshua. Pray and ask the Lord for the impossible. And when the impossible happens, work for it. Because when there is momentum, when the Lord extends the momentum, ang hulugan po yun ng maraming gawain, trabaho, trabaho. At kailangan tapusin kung ano ang kanyang pinapagawa. He is the one who is causing the movement. He is the one causing the momentum. Let's join him in his movement and we will see the impossible thing that will happen in our midst. Sasabihin natin, wow, Panginoon, purihin ka. Purihin ka. Luwalhatiin ka. Tayo po'y manalangin. Thank you so much, Father God, for the story of Joshua. Isang kwinto, Panginoon, ng mga bagay na naganap, mga bagay na imposible na yung ginawa. Na yung pong hinayaan na maganap ayon sa desire, ayon sa hiling ni Joshua. Father, we know that it will also happen in our times. Yun din po ay magaganap. Yung mga bagay na hindi normal, hindi natural, mga bagay na imposible, pwede po maganap sa amin. Because you does not change. Di ka po nagbabago, Panginoon. Kung ano ka po noon, ganun ka pa rin ngayon. Ganun ka pa rin bukas. You made the impossible miracles Noong panahon ni Joshua, you can still make miracles sa aming kapanahonan. You can still miracles. You can still, still make miracles, Panginoon, sa panahon ng aming mga anak in the future. Thank you so much, Father God. We just want to see your hand working in us and through us. Salamat po, Father God, for, for the opportunity to see these things and to experience these things, Panginoon. Be glorified and be magnified. 
in our lives, Father God. We pray, Father, Father God, itong mga susunod na mga araw, may your favor and faithfulness will be upon all of us. May your coverings and protection will be upon all your people. Salamat po. Ito ang aming hiling at dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are inviting you to join our Simbahay in the following areas. Balogo, Baribag, Bariis, Buhatan, Gabaw, Housing, Madanan, Marikrum, Piot, Rossville, Santol Street and Yacal Street, SPPVS, San Lorenzo, San Vicente. For inquiries, concerns, and prayer requests, please communicate through our Simbahay facilitators and point persons. And you may also like, follow, and subscribe to all our social media platforms. See you next time!